This is a Blender tutorial for the 3D polo shirt. This file also has a Procreate file included and I'll be making a separate tutorial for that. So the first thing you're going to have to do is download the file from clothingmockups.com or available at Etsy. And once you've downloaded the files, we're going to head over to blender.org and download Blender. Blender is free for everyone and it's the 3D software we'll be using to uh, edit this file. So we're going to open up Blender. If it's the first time you're using Blender, don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step. It can look a little bit intimidating at first, but we'll only be using a few buttons. Um, the other software we'll be using is Photoshop. We'll be using maybe Photoshop for 90% of this, um, but we'll be rendering it in Blender. So we are going to locate the file that we've downloaded and we are going to find the polo shirt with buttons blend file and drag and drop it into Blender. Once you've dragged and dropped it, you'll be greeted with this screen. Um, on the left hand side is uh, the 3D model and the right hand side is with the uh, the textures you'll be you can change. At the bottom here you have the timeline which can turn the 3D model so you can take photographs or you can also preview the animation which is a 360 degree rotating animation that you can be looped for uh, videos. We are currently in the layout up here and we're going to move over and have a look at the two other tabs we'll be using which is UV editing and shading. So UV editing, um, we press tab first to see the model and this puts us into object mode. Uh, to edit this we press tab again or you change it up here and you will see the 3D model uh, in its 2D form laid out like a piece of paper. We can go up to this icon here and we can click on the current textures we have involved with the model. You can see it's a little bit difficult to see with all the, the triangles here, um, but I'll be opening this up in Photoshop to give you an impression of how it looks. So let's go over to Photoshop. I'm gonna find the texture we used in Photoshop. I'm gonna drag and drop it into Photoshop to open it up. As you can see, it looks like this. Oh, let me just get into full screen. The checkered background doesn't affect the 3D model at all. You could draw on this, you could, um, you could do whatever here, and it won't show up. It's only on the templates that you'll make any changes. So any lines across here will show on the 3D model. Let me just go back here. Uh, I have currently two different uh, texture templates. We have the, the striped one, and we also have the solid color one. We're now going to change the color on it so you can do it yourself as well. So this one's bright orange. Maybe you want it white, for example, or black. Uh, let's go to image adjustments and go to um, replace color. And we're going to use the eyedropper to click on the color. And we're just going to choose the color that we want. Uh, I'm actually going to change it to a blue color. Uh, and maybe change it so it's a little bit darker. Press OK. Um, you could add logos here or stripes or graphics or do whatever you want. Once you're finished with your design, you can go up to File and go to Export, Quick Export as PNG. Then I'm going to put this PNG in the same folder and just call it Blue. Save that. We're going to go back over to Blender now and we're going to go to Shading and to change it from the stripes to something new we go to this folder icon and we find the file we've just done in Photoshop which is the blue one. Open image and it does nothing. Ah there we are. So there you can see it's updated the model with the new colors and new textures. We can go back to layout and we can have a quick look at it. It's looking pretty good. Um, and if we want to, we can also have a look at how it would look like in uh, the stripes again. 
So this box here is the one you use to change the colors. This box here under is the uh, what's called the, the normal maps, which give the model its texture. Um, if you take it away, it won't do anything too drastic, but it will just take away a certain quality of, of detail that you had uh, before. It's more more visual, like on the final the final render when you start making the animation or the photo. I'm going to quickly show you up here as well. You have wireframe uh, wireframe mode. Just click on that. It will give you the wireframe of the model. This is um, I think uh, a solid solid uh, gray texture. This one here gives you a preview of the the, the shading. And this one here is the render. The render is the one that's most accurate, but it's the most taxing on your computer. So I would recommend using the viewport shader rather than the render up here when you're editing. Um, but if you want to take a quick preview, with the, the, the rendered version gives you better quality in terms of lighting and details. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to um, take a photograph at an angle. Um, by going to render, render image, and just previewing how it looks. So that's just one example. What we're also going to do is go to the render settings up here, uh, sorry, the output settings, and we can change it to, for example, uh, this right now is 16 by 9, which is perfect for a YouTube video, but you can change it to the dimensions of uh, a um, Instagram post, which I think is 1080 by 1920, so opposite way around. Um, um, and what's also important is when we're making animations, that we make sure that we have a folder selected for the animations. I'm going to just put it into the rendered animations folder and press accept. The reason this is important is if you have a Mac, um, it's very difficult to find the files afterwards. And this just makes it a little bit easier. If we want to change the color of the background, we can go to the material uh, tab, make sure that background's here, and we can change the color by clicking on here and changing it like this. As you can see, it hasn't changed the color, and that's because emission is on. We have quite a bright background, but if I change it from white to black, you'll see that it's changed the color. change it to slightly lighter color. I'm going to render this as an animation now. So to do that, we go to render, render animation and click here. But before I do that, I want to show you that we have 250 frames. And what this does is once we render this animation, Blender will render each frame one time to make the animation. So basically it's going to take some time to render out 250 individual images. So I'll get back to you with the final result once it's done. So this is the result of the animation, which is five seconds long. It took about 20 minutes to render. Uh, depending on your computer will depend on how fast it renders. Okay. One final thing before we finish is to look at the lighting. So we're at the layout right now. I'm going to go to the scenes and to the lights. We have a key light which is coming from the side here which is highlighted in orange. We have an, a fill light and another fill light. If we want to change the uh, brightness of it we can go to the light tab down here. Make sure we have the light selected that we want and we can adjust it by changing the wattage here. It's important to note that you should be in render otherwise you will not see the uh, effect. Uh, you can also change the color, so if you want to change it to a blue color, you can have some traumatic. You can also have like uh, another color coming from the other side, for example, uh, red. It could be pretty cool. Um, and you can adjust it here like this. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Bye.